The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. And now, in many states, you can buy this delicious Parquet Margarine in yellow quarter-pound sticks. Yes, this same spread that tastes so good now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow and ready to serve. That's Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's doing in Summerfield. Recently, the great Gildersleeve has had only two interests in life. One is Mrs. Ellen Knickerbocker, his neighbor's wealthy sister from Baltimore. The other is his amateur detective hobby... This evening, we find him pursuing both. Uh, uh, by George, Ellen, it's a beautiful night. Oh, it's awfully dark, Throckmorton. Uh, why are we stopping here? Well, I wanted to show you the old haunted house I investigated last week. My first big case. Oh? Yeah. Look, you can see it silhouetted against the sky. Oh, spooky, isn't it? Spooky? Well, not to a student of the Eagle Eye Detective Institute. <laughs> The chief of police and I are keeping an eye on it. Well, then why bring me up here? Why didn't you come up with the chief of police? Well, he's not as pretty as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Throckmorton, we'd better drive back to town. I don't like it out here. Oh? Well, if you're frightened, Ellen, you can sit closer to me. Oh, I'm not really frightened. Shucks. Boo! Oh, dear! Darn it, she jumped the wrong way. <laughs> now, Throckmorton... <laughs> I thought you weren't frightened. Well, this is a lonely spot, and I am wearing a rather expensive diamond necklace. Let's go home. Oh, well, all right, Ellen, anything you say. Well, what do you know? We ran out of gas. <laughs> uh-huh. Throckmorton, didn't I see you turn off the switch? You did? <clears throat> Thought it was darker. <laughs> Ellen. Yes? Ellen. Now, Throckmorton... How about a little kiss? No. Ellen, you're not supposed to resist an officer of the law. And a detective's an officer. <laughs> now, don't be silly. You call wanting to kiss you silly? Well, I call it silly to park up here and pretend you're out of gas and to pretend you're a detective. Pretend? Ellen, I've almost completed the course. I've solved every test case they've given me without even looking up the answers in the back of the book. Throckmorton, why waste your time on things like that? Well... You know, sometimes you act like a schoolboy. Schoolboy? Okay, if I'm a schoolboy, it's too late for me to be out. I guess we'd better go home. Not Throckmorton. No, no, we'll go home. If you don't like my hobby, I guess you don't like me. Oh, I do, but to be really fond of a man, I have to be proud of him. Oh? And I'd like to be proud of you. <laughs> Ellen, I'll throw away my detective kit tomorrow. Good. Now, how about that kiss tonight? Oh, Throckmorton. <laughs> oh, oh, stop. <laughs> Uh, good morning, infants. Hi, Unc. Good morning, Unky. Did you and Mrs. Knickerbocker have a nice time last night? Hmm? Mrs. Knickerbocker and I had a very pleasant evening. Thank you, Marjorie. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Careful, young man, or I won't give you my detective kit. Your detective kit? You mean it, Unc? Yes, my boy. It's all yours. Gosh, thanks, Unc. Did you flunk the course? Yeah. No, I did not flunk the course. Last night, I just decided I had no further use for it. I'm not a schoolboy. You'll find the whole outfit in the box up on my dresser. Thank goodness. Oh, boy, I can't wait to go handcuff Craig Bullard to a tree. Leroy. <laughs> well, it would keep that little Craig out of mischief. Not a bad idea. Is all the stuff there? The mustache and the wig and the spirit gum? Well, I think I used all the spirit gum sticking on disguises. That's okay. Craig and I can use bubble gum. Bubble gum? <laughs> good morning, Mr. Gilsley. Yeah, good morning, Bertie. Here's your coffee. Thank you, Bertie. Bang, bang, bang! All right, Louie, drop that gun. 
Leroy, not so noisy. Okay, so long, Unc. And thanks for the detective, kid. And don't slam the... Don't slam the door. <laughs> what a detective. <laughs> we got two detectives in the family now? Only one, Bertie. Uncle Mort's given up the idea. He has? Well, I sure am glad, Mr. Gillsleeve, because you never know when a detective's going to get it. What? Anytime you associate with crooks, you're liable to get it. Yeah, well, I'm not associating with any crooks, Bertie. I sure am glad to hear that, Mr. Gillsleeve, because you never know when a crook's going to get it, or a detective either. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about me, huh? Mr. Gillsleeve, <laughs> did you read about that detective in Detroit? No, Bertie. He got it. He's in the hospital with a 30-30 in his leg and a 50-50 chance. Yep, <laughs> Yes, sir. You never know when a detective's going to get it. Yeah. And you never know when Bertie's going to hand it out. Hey, Unc, guess what? Yeah, what, Leroy? There's been a big robbery. Robbery? Well, you're the detective now, Leroy. Go catch the burglar. I mean it. There was a burglar at Bullard's last night. Well, what'd he take? Bullard's new stainless steel ash can? <laughs> Gosh, no, he stole Mrs. Knickerbocker's fur coat and diamond necklace. What? Really, Leroy? Yeah, last night. Oh, my goodness. Is Ellen all right? Sure, but boy, is she upset. She's on her way over here to talk to you, Unc. To me? She is? I'll get it. Now, everybody be calm. Throckmorton, I've been robbed. Yes, Leroy told me. Come on in, Ellen. Somebody broke in last night and took my diamond necklace and my best mink coat. Yeah, oh, my goodness. I'm terribly sorry to hear about it. So am I, Mrs. Knickerbocker. Oh, thank you, Marjorie. Throckmorton, what will I do? Brother Rumson's out of town. I don't know where to turn. Well... You know the local police. Will you, will you see that I get a good investigator? Ellen, if it's a good investigator you want, you don't have to go to the police. But Throckmorton... Yeah, I know you think my detective work is silly. But last week, I solved the case... Three minutes before Mr. District Attorney did. Well, if you, you think you can do anything. Do anything? I certainly can. Leroy, hand me back my handcuffs. Oh, for corn's sake. Ellen, you knew I'd be back this afternoon. Why didn't you wait and let me handle this? But I was excited, Rumson. I had to call in someone. Well, you didn't have to lose your head completely and call Gildersleeve. Now, Rumson, I think you've been wrong about Throckmorton. He's, he's been very calm and level-headed about this. That's one of Gildersleeve's biggest problems. He's too level-headed. <laughs> Under that poodle dog pompadour, he's a flathead. <laughs> oh, Rumson, you exaggerate. Not very much. Now, Rumson, Throckmorton's made quite a study of detective work. But, Ellen, I've engaged a private detective from Kansas City. He's coming in this afternoon. Oh? Now, can't you discourage Gildersleeve? He couldn't tell a burglar from a banker. Now, Rumson... Well... Oh, that must be Throckmorton. Now I'll let him in. Come in, Throckmorton. Shh. Yes. Ellen, I saw a dark, ugly-looking man with a black suitcase sneak in your back door. Gildersleeve, that was me! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Uh, welcome home. <laughs> oh, Rumson and I were just discussing the robbery, Throckmorton. No, you don't have to worry about a thing, Ellen. I figured out a foolproof plan to trap the burglar. Wonderful. Gildersleeve, do you really think you should neglect your work at the water department just to help us? Oh, glad to do it, Mr. Bullard, for Ellen. And you, <laughs> you're her brother. <laughs> now, chapter one of the manual says, quote, to detect, one must first deduct, unquote. So for two hours, I employed the simple process of deduction. And I came up with the answer. You did? You bet. The reason your furs and jewels were stolen is because they're valuable. <laughs> that took you two hours? Yeah. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bullard. You may scoff if you like, but how did the burglar know they were valuable? Because last week, the society column described the furs and jewels Ellen wore at that country club party. Oh, that's right, Throckmorton. Yes, indeed. That's the way Raffles and those other jewel thieves operate. They check the society columns. Chapter four. Gildersleeve, you may be on the right track. <laughs> now, here's what I've done, Bullard. I've had this news item printed in the afternoon paper. Listen. Distressed by the loss of refers and diamonds, the wealthy Mrs. Ellen Knickerbocker is receiving an even more valuable collection this afternoon from her home in Baltimore. But Throckmorton, that isn't true. I know that, but the burglar doesn't, and he'll be back. <laughs> Clever, eh, Bullard? Clever? Gildersleeve, don't you realize you're making decoys out of every one of us? Decoys? I'm not holding open house for criminals. Well... What are we supposed to do? Sit around and wait to be robbed again? 
Oh, don't worry, Mr. Bullard. I'll be right outside. I'll catch him before he ever gets in the house. Gildersleeve, all I can say is you'd better. <laughs> Guess I'd better. <laughs> Here I go. Good night, Marjorie. Good night, Unky. Be careful now. Don't worry, I will. Hey, Unky, going over to watch the Bullard's house now? Shh, not so loud, Leroy. Can I go with you? No, Leroy, it's getting dark. You go climb in your safe little bed. I'll just walk to the middle of the street with you. Got a gun, Unk? Of course, Leroy. You run along back now. Okay. Hey, Unk. Mm, yes, Leroy? What happens to us if he beats you to the draw? To you? <laughs> Leroy, don't say that. Good luck, Unc. <laughs> Good night, my boy. What if he does beat me to the draw? Well, I better hide someplace where I'll see him first. I could wait for him in the Bullard Cyclone Cellar. It's stocked with dried apricots. And I was too excited to eat my dessert. Say... I could climb up there in little Craig's treehouse. Sure. I'll be able to watch both entrances that way. <laughs> Wonder if this ladder will hold me. Oh, brother, the higher I get, the more it shimmies. What are you doing up there on my ladder? Oh, hello, Craig. Well, I'm climbing up to your treehouse. I'm going to catch the burglar. My father says you couldn't catch cold. I can, too. I had laryngitis. Never mind. You run along in the house now. I'm going on up. You're going to break my ladder. I'm going to take it down. Craig, you wouldn't do that. You're too heavy. I'm going to take it down. Craig, let go of that ladder. I'm going to pull it away. Now, Craigie. Craigie. Here it goes. Why, you little fool. <laughs> Just made it. If I can just squeeze in this door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't even get in the treehouse. That's what you think. Oop. Something's holding me. <laughs> Darn nail. Well, I made it anyway. Craig, what's going on out there? I'm watching a big monkey up in the tree. The monkey? Uh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'm on the job. Oh, I see. Come along, Craig. It's your bedtime. Okay. And how many times have I told you not to call Gildersleeve a monkey? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> time is it? 11 o'clock. Well, all the lights are out in the boards except one. Well, there it goes. <sighs> Getting hungry. Maybe I should have hidden with the dried apricots. <laughs> Uh-oh. Somebody's opening a window. Wonder who it is. Must be the burglar. Oh, uh, Gildersleeve? Uh, 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 yes, Mr. Bullard? Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. That Bullard. He's in his warm bed, and I'm up in this drafty treehouse. <laughs> Wish I hadn't ripped my pants. Wouldn't be up here if Ellen wasn't depending on me. Yes. What's that? Somebody sneaking up the driveway. Just staying in the shadows. Why, George Gildersleeve, he's taking your bait. He's coming right under the treehouse. Oop, got a gun. No, it's a flashlight, I think. Maybe if I lean out far enough. Oop, it is a gun. Wonder if I can reach mine. Timber! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I lit right on him. Surrender! I've got you covered! Oh. Mr. Bullard! 
Turn on the lights. Come on down. What's going on now, Gildersleeve? Look, I knocked out your burglar. Wait till I roll him over. Oh. Gildersleeve, that's no burglar. That's my Kansas City detective. It is? Oh, sorry, but it's his fault. I yelled timber. Gildersleeve, get off the property! <laughs> Then I'll take some little green vegetables and I'll melt a little parquet margarine and I'll pour that parquet hey, over... Hey, Bertie, hold up. You talking to yourself? Land sakes, I guess I was, Mr. Wall. You know what they say about people who talk to themselves. <laughs> Not when you talk about what I was talking about. I was planning tonight's dinner and I was just melting some of that delicious, nutritious parquet margarine for the vegetables. Nothing wrong with that. It's always smart to use parquet. And I always use it, Mr. Wall. Parquet tastes so good on vegetables and bread and pancakes and rolls, too, as a matter of fact. You bet it does. It's smart to use parquet margin for other reasons, as a matter of fact. It's economical and it's... Costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. And it's got that real craft quality, as a matter of fact. That's why it can't help but taste good, Bertie. Parquet is made from only the carefully selected products of American farms. And there's 15,000 units of important vitamin A added to every delicious pound. Every day, more women buy parquet margarine because it's economical, because it's nourishing. And mostly because it tastes so good. That's why I use it, as a matter of fact. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. In trying to catch the burglar who robbed Mr. Bullard's attractive sister, he caught Mr. Bullard's private detective. Mr. Bullard didn't like this. In fact, he ordered our hero off the case and off the property. Uh, Bullard will regret this. I know that burglar's coming back. Gosh, young, sitting up here in your room isn't going to do any good. Well? Who's going to catch the crook if you don't? That private detective went back to Kansas City where he's safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like to help Mrs. Knickerbocker, Leroy. Sure. Hey, couldn't you get back over to Bullard's if you wore a disguise? Disguise? Leroy, that's silly. You could make up like Eddie the gardener. Eddie Gardner? Oh, oh, Eddie their gardener. Oh, sure. Yeah. He's fat, too. Leroy? Sure, I'll put on a big fuzzy mustache, an old shirt, and a pair of torn pants, and you look just like him. Well, I've got the torn pants. Now, let's see if I can talk like Eddie. What's the matter with you, kids? Get out of the flowers and go tell your mama she's want you. That's great, Unc. What is Eddie, an Eskimo? In it. <laughs> <laughs> Hand me the putty out of that makeup kit, Leroy. Oh, boy. Hi, right, George. Great idea I had. I haven't used the dialect since I was in Kismet in the senior class play. Gosh, Unc, were you a senior? Twice, Leroy. <laughs> in high school and in college. Gee. There. How's that for a putty nose, huh? Wait till I'll put it on. <laughs> you look funny, young. Yeah? Well, Eddie, Eddie has a funny nose. <laughs> now, if I can just work on the bulb here on the end. Yeah. But it'll get us in the same color as the rest of you. I'll take care of that. Go into Marjorie's room and bring me her pancake makeup. Okay. You want some leg makeup, too? No, Leroy. The rip isn't that big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I better... Flatten the bridge a little bit. Uncle Moore. Yes, Marjorie? Judge Hooker is here to see you. Yeah, old goat, what does he want? Hello, Gilda. Yeah, come on in, Judge. I'll show him what a real makeup artist can do. I was in the neighborhood, Gilda, and I... Well, look at the nose. Yeah? You like it, Judge? Why the disguise, Gilda? Trying to capture another detective? <laughs> <laughs> now, Judge... Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> and the same thing could happen to an old goat. I'm not at all curious. What are you going to do with the rest of the clay? Well, I'm going to make it into a big, long nose for you, Judge, so you can really stick it into other people's business. Now, Gilda. <laughs> Hand me that mustache. You mean this big, fuzzy one? Mm -hmm. My, it's a beauty. Yeah. Hand it to me, Judge. Don't try it on your head. It's not a toupee. 
<laughs> I know it, Gildy. Yeah, let's see now. Oh, boy, George, I look pretty good. I think I'll wear my old straw fishing hat and go down and test my disguise on Peavy. Oh, going down to Peavy's? You bet. <laughs> if he doesn't recognize me, nobody will. <laughs> and wait till I try this dialect on him, Judge. Hello, I am new fella in town, looking for honest work. <laughs> what do you think of that, Judge? <laughs> Peavy's Farmers here, Mr. Peavy speaking. Oh, hello, Judge. How's that? He is? <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve's quite a fellow. Very well, Judge. I'll pretend I don't know who he is. Goodbye. Well, look who's here. <laughs> Hello. Well, hello, stranger. What can I do for you? Well, I am new fella in this town. I can see that. How's everything in the old country? Old country? <laughs> Please, I am a citizen. 100% American. You don't say. I am looking for honest work. Well, there isn't much doing around Summerfield now. Of course, in the fall, we have a brisk tomato picking season. Uh, tomato picking? You look like a good tomato picker. Oh. <laughs> Please, I am gardener by trade. Maybe you give me a job taking care of your garden, eh? <laughs> well, Mrs. Peavy takes care of our garden. I work cheap, one dollar, one hour. I only pay Mrs. Peavy 50 cents a week. <laughs> that wouldn't even keep me in cigars. How's that? Yeah, I think I'll have some cigars. <laughs> well, well. Yeah. Two El Lobos. The El Lobos, you say? Da. <laughs> Do you carry these? Oh, yes, we have to. The local water commissioner smokes them. Oh, well, what is good enough for the water commissioner is good enough for me. I think so. <laughs> I hear about this water commissioner. People tell me he's a very big man in this town. Well, he's a big man, all right. They say he's a very popular city official. Well, yes. Good fellow. Yes. Also, they say this water commissioner is great amateur detective. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> For your information, PBI, I am the water commissioner. You don't say. Yes. Wait till I take off my nose. Look. Well, I declare. Pretty good disguise, eh, PV? Certainly is. I couldn't have told you from a tomato picker. <laughs> well, that's pretty close to a gardener. <laughs> Uh, George, this disguise certainly fooled Peavy. Nobody at Bullard's will ever recognize me now that it's almost dark. <laughs> I'll just pretend I'm working late with these flowers in the backyard. That burglar's bound to show up tonight. What are you doing? Oop, Craig. Gotta get rid of him. What are you doing? Uh, I am Eddie, the gardener, taking care of the flowers. You're not Eddie. I am too. I am too. No, you're not. You're too fat. Oop. I know. Craig, you gotta give me a break. Here's a dollar. Run along and don't tell your father I'm out here. A lousy dollar? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's two. Craig, it's time to come in the house. Shh, Craig, not a word to your father. I don't want anybody to know it's me. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what are you doing in my flower bed? Oh, my goodness. Ellen, come out here and take a look at this. Now, Mr. Bullard. Your detective is in our petunias. Really, Throckmorton? Oh, uh, hello, Ellen. What? <laughs> What are you doing in that silly costume? Well, I thought it was a disguise, but... Rockmorton, aren't you being just a little bit ridiculous? But, Ellen, I only wanted to help you. Gildersleeve, I thought I told you to drop this case. All right, I'm dropping it. I'm dropping the whole idea. I see I'm not appreciated. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, good night, Throckmorton. Good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Give me back my two dollars. <laughs> that Bullard family. I ought to walk right through their nasturtium bed. Kick Bullard's new stainless steel ash can right out in the street. Ooh, I forgot I cut the toe out of my Oxford to look like Eddie. <laughs> well, 
I'll go home and take off this phony disguise and give these handcuffs back to Leroy. I'll never try to catch anybody again. Shh. Hey, Eddie. What? It's Harry. I'm over here behind a tree. Somebody thinks I'm Eddie. Uh, just stay in the shadows and listen. What is this? Okay, Eddie, go right ahead. I'm listening. Yeah, we got a chance to make another haul at the bullets tonight. Oh? Huh? Yeah. The paper says the dames had more jewels shipped in. Zeke, he's the burglar. Now get this. I'm getting. You go back over there and open the basement window like before. You got it? You bet I've got it. What? Then I got you. Uh, you're not Eddie. You're not kidding. Don't you try to run away. I played tackle at Princeton. Oh. Uh, where are those handcuffs? Stop kicking. Oh. oh I can just okay, get you asked for this. Oh. I'm getting out of here. You won't get far. I've got the handcuffs on you. Oh, one of them is on me. Bullard, come quick. I've caught the burglar. I mean, we've caught each other. Anyway, I've solved the case. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Listen to this good news, ladies. You can now get yellow parquet in all states where laws permit. Yes, parquet, the same delicious spread with a wonderful flavor, now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow. You'll find yellow parquet costs a little more, largely because of the federal coloring tax. But it's a real saving for you in time and trouble. Try the new yellow parquet in quarter-pound sticks. Remember, where state laws permit, you can get this delicious spread, golden yellow, ready to serve. Of course, you can still buy white parquet at the low economy price. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Thank you, Sergeant. Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What are you doing here? I thought you might like some cigars. Oh, well, that's very nice of you, Peavy. But you didn't have to bring me a whole box. Yeah, you might be here in jail for quite a while. Leroy hasn't found the handcuff keys yet. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Care for a cigar, Harry? Eh. Uh, ah, uh, yourself. <laughs> Good night, folks. Yeah. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Helen Knickerbocker by Miss Martha Scott. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Leeton. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You'll like this pleasant, quick way of making leftovers more delicious. Just add a little Kraft prepared mustard and you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard, and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft's prepared mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.